The future of computing is here, and it's looking really bright. Xbox can't even supply enough Xboxes for their own Xbox needs, and Threadripper 5000. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Just want to reiterate that, yeah, it's me editing these videos. Our editor is on holiday for the holidays, so just take this hot news in whatever format you get it in, all right? It's gonna be hot still. That's all I can promise. Let's dive in to the future of computing, which is being brought to us by a company called Lightelligence, and they've developed an optical chip that can surpass the fastest cards on the planet to the tune of 350 times that of an RTX 3080 in specific workloads, which in case you didn't know, an RTX 3080 is actually pretty close to the top of like what a single chip can do. Lightelligence putting out this promotional video of their upcoming optical processor, which they are dubbing as PACE, also known as the Photon photonic arithmetic computing engine, and because it uses both photonics, which is the light that actually is in the chip, as well as regular processing power, they've enabled it to be better than any of the optical processors that have come before them, with them saying one of their unique advantages is developing the optical computing while also co-designing many different domains together. And they also release a whole lot of spec details on kind of how this practically works and their path forward. Right now, it's the Pace Accelerator card, which is over 100 times faster than a current CPUs and GPUs. Then they'll come out with a Pilot AI Accelerator card next year, and then AI Accelerator for cloud computing potentially in 2023. One of the big reasons for this breakthrough is that they've been able to pack over 10,000 photonic devices on a single chip, which is something that hasn't been done before, at least according to them. Obviously, this is not necessarily rolling out to end consumers at this point. It's gonna be on the back end, developmental side. This is obviously the start of a new era of computation, so it's not fully ready to stretch its legs out and prove it's worth to the mass consumers, but behind the scenes, this is actually looking really good and really promising for a way of getting out computation that isn't dependent on teaching sand to think. Whether or not this is ever gonna make its way into video gamers' hands in the form of consoles or GPUs remains to be seen, but breakthroughs like this should be celebrated and kept note of as the technology progresses, because one day your PC might run on light. That much is clear, is it? I don't know. Let's segue to talking about today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. My friends, I am a huge fan of lifelong learning. In fact, I've got a secret coming up that I'm gonna tell you guys about in a little bit, but it involves me continuing to educate myself in a variety of different ways, and that's why I'm so thankful to have Skillshare as a sponsor, because they're an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. And not just content creators who are on the internet, but creative people as well. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in your own creativity creativity. From creative writing to music and music productions, or my personal favorite, the marketing, freelance, and entrepreneurship sections. Those are the ones that I always go to. And in fact, the one that I've been listening to lately is Context is Key, Social Media Strategy in a Noisy Online World by Gary Vaynerchuk, which is somebody that I've listened to uh, sporadically along my entire growth as a content creator, and I thoroughly enjoyed that class. And Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And for our international community out there, Skillshare's entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, and Portuguese. My friends, learn some things, explore your creativity, get your mind into the imaginative universe, and learn from Skillshare. So if you click the link that's in the video description for Skillshare, the first 1,000 of you to do that will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Big thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. But you don't need a class to teach you that products are launching all the time, and the one that might be hitting the retailer near you, or not, is the 3090 Ti, because we now have leaked images of its packaging coming from physical retail environments, not necessarily miners showing this off inside of their giant mining cave. The box art kind of teases at the fact that this likely will still have only 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, which is the exact same amount that the 3090 he has, so that's not a whole lot that's kind of changing with this TI. It's gonna have slightly more CUDA cores and likely the same memory amount but with slightly increased memory bandwidth, and we're expecting NVIDIA to announce this on January 4th at their CES keynote. How much it's gonna cost is too damn much. That's what I say, but keep your ears peeled for when that finally comes out. And LG wants to finally come out with a gaming laptop that's gonna feature the high-end RTX 3080 and current 11th gen Intel CPUs that are out there, as well as a bunch of other specs. This is the 
the LG 17 inch ultra gear and it's going to have the RTX 3080 max Q as I mentioned up to 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, 1080p, 300 hertz IPS panel with a 93 watt hour battery, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, USB 3, HDMI, micro SD, RJ45 Ethernet, 1080p webcam. It has a whole lot in. It's looking really sleek with a nice purple accent on the back there. I'm actually finding this to be quite intriguing. I would love to potentially see this at CES. LG is going to unveil more there for us. Hopefully we'll get some pricing on that bad boy too. Probably going to be expensive, but LG is known for making at least decent laptops in the LG Gram and so on. So getting a gaming laptop from them might not necessarily be such a bad thing. And what's not a bad thing right now, what's not a good thing, it's crypto stocks. Let's get into the price in Bitcoin. <laughs> Just down a little bit, just a little point zero three percent. That's like the flattest I've seen it in 24 hours from being just below $47,000. Ethereum down 0.64% to be at $3,900 and Dogecoin down 1.4% to sit at 16.8 cents. GameStop up just a little bit too. 1% right now, 157.39 where it's sitting at AMC continuing to climb up, especially with all of the good news that's coming out about Spider-Man No Way Home making a whole lot of money at the movie theaters. 2.9% increase on the day right now just sitting sitting below $30 as I'm recording this episode. And you know what's sitting below its heights that it once was? Radio Shack, you guessed right, I'm proud of you. That segue could have gone anywhere and I heard you, I heard you shout into the void. But he's gonna talk about Radio Shack next and how it has now cryptocurrency and that's the best thing that a dying industry can get into is all the crypto stuff. You're darn right, my friends, just like Kodak Coin all the way back in 2017, just like Long Island Blockchain instead of Long Island IC, we've got Radio Shack coming out with radio tokens hoping to build a decentralized finance network and get into the cut of everything that's going on when it comes to trading cryptocurrencies. If you go over to Radio Shack's website right now, you'll find out about its plans for decentralized finance built on Atlas USV. And it's just a really strange setup that just harkens back to a dying business trying to scrounge some sense of being worth something, however it can, and getting into something that has no business being in. Obviously, this could be a huge success, just like Kodak Coin could have been all the way back in 2017. I personally uh, forgot to buy Kodak Coin, and now look at me sitting with all the regrets of my past being a failure here in the present, which is exactly what Microsoft had happened. They're the failure in the present of supplying consoles to their own tournaments. According to reports coming out of a Halo Infinite tournament that's happening, they don't have enough Xbox Series Xs to supply the gamers, so they had to switch over to using dev kits of the Series X because they just don't have enough due to global supply chain issues. And that's coming out officially from 343 saying, yeah, we don't, we just don't have enough Xboxes. They're exactly the same as the retail version, but you're not playing on the retail version. You're gonna be playing on the dev kit. So get ready for that. And if you are ready to be disappointed when you picked up Final Fantasy VII Remake on PlayStation Plus a few months ago, well, get your heart not broken, unbroken. Sew that heart back together because it was announced at the time that you couldn't upgrade to the integrate from that, you had to buy the whole new Final Fantasy VII again. Well, now they have changed it and made it so that if you did get it on PlayStation Plus for free, you can pay $15 at a limited discount right now in order to upgrade to the integrate version, which has all of the PS5 enhancements and then also the DLC that comes with it, which I guess is good, but why would they do this now and not announce that they were gonna do this later on? I, I, to force people to buy the whole game in between when it came out on PS Plus and now, I don't know, this just, uh, Square Enix is not on the nice list for me right now. They're on the naughty list. I'm giving them a sack of coal. And in case you have Final Fantasy VII Remake on PC and it's been playing like a sack of coal, you might be able to run it in DX11 and get it to play just a little bit better. You might have to turn off HDR because it'll cause issues with bad color coordination and banding. But according to reports, if you force it to run DX11 mode, which link in the video description, the article actually tells you how to do that. Since it's not in the freaking menu options, you can might actually experience some less frame drops and stutters from that video game. And in case you want to experience more raw power in your PC, Threadripper 5000, according to new rumors, might be launching on March 8th of 2022. This is just a rumor at this point. This thing has been rumored to come out for a while now. It's been delayed months after months and Threadripper 5000 will be coming March 8th. Who knows? But that's when you should at least mark your calendars to be disappointed a little bit. I'm gonna disappoint you by hopping in to hit to hop on and out of here because I'm done with this episode of Hot News. Y'all been great. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends, for the hottest tech news on the internet. Cheerios.